folks, uh, welcome back to the Astro Forum channel and thanks for tuning in. As you can see, we are here in winter wonderland in the Netherlands. It's minus six degrees Celsius and it will cool down to about minus 12 tonight. But I was really dying to test my new Celestron Edge HD 8 inch telescope for some deep sky astrophotography. And it has been almost two months since I had the opportunity uh, to do some astrophotography. So I'm really, really happy that it's kind of clear right now and hopefully it will stay this way. And let me just quickly show you my setup so you know what I'm imaging with. Oh, folks, it's really cold. So let me just quickly show you my setup. Uh, this is, of course, the Celestron Edge HD 8 inch. I also have my 0.7 reducer, so I'm working with a focal length of about 1400 millimeters tonight. Uh, I have the appropriate back focus. This is the ZWO electronic filter wheel. And of course, I am also working with my ASI 1600 Mono Pro camera. And for guiding, I wanted to show you this. Um, yeah, I'm still using my old Orion 50mm guide scope and the 120MC color camera. And I know maybe I should replace that. This is the old guide scope I'm also using with my uh, refractor, with my 480mm focal length refractor. But uh, yeah, let's see how it goes in this first uh, test. Hi folks, I'm finally doing some actual astrophotography for the first time in about two months. And I'm pretty excited about that. So finally we do have some clear skies in the Netherlands. Although uh, clear is a pretty relative term because when you can look at the Dutch uh, cloud radar over here, now we do have some hazy clouds uh, hanging over the night sky, but I'm, I'm looking at some stars here and I am able to take some pictures. So I'm already pre pretty excited about that. It's super cold, it's minus 12. And we do have an evening clock and a complete lockdown in the Netherlands. So you can see I didn't go to the hairdresser in about three months. Uh, we have to stay inside from 9 p.m. onwards. So I'm pretty excited to be able to do some astrophotography from my backyard still. Yeah, guiding looks pretty decent. So I'm at about 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.4. I'm looking at RA and deck, so I'm pretty happy with that actually. I know I probably should get a bigger guide scope with a longer focal length or maybe look into off-axis guiding. But for this moment, I'm already happy that I'm able to guide. And when I look at guiding accuracy, I'm getting similar numbers as compared to using my APO refractor. Yeah, I'm currently taking some HA pictures of the, uh, I wanted to say the Orion Nebula, but this is the Flame Nebula, of course. And so you can see it here in Sequence Generator Pro. I'm taking these 300 second pictures of the, or uh, the Orion, of the Flame Nebula. I don't, I don't know. I'm overexcited, so I'm mispronouncing the name. Um, so five minute pictures. I'm just testing out like, hey, do I have the correct back focus? Um, yeah, of course we can see the halo of this star, I think. This is Altinoc, right? Um, so here you would have the, flay, the Horsehead Nebula. Um, and what do I want to say? Yeah, it, it looks pretty decent. So I was also checking out the focal length here. So obviously we have a more detailed image of the Flame Nebula with this focal length. So I'm already pretty excited about that. And I was just looking at my back focus because this is the first time I actually uh, tried out the Edge HD with a 0.7 reducer for deep sky imaging for long exposure pictures. And I'm looking at these pictures and I think also around the edges I'm pretty well in focus. So I was actually uh, expecting elongated stars because this is the first time I, uh, I checked my back focus. But I think I got lucky. It, for me, at least, it looks pretty pretty good. So hi, folks. Uh, I wanted to show you the main results. Of course, I have been getting over the past few days. So we are here in Pix Inside, and I also wanted to make a comparison. And uh, hopefully, this will not take too much time because I'm always talking too much. 
Um, but let me start with this older picture I took about two years ago of the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula. And this is taken with my apochromatic refractor, which has a focal length of about 500 millimeters. And I always like working with refractors because they provide you with this wider uh, field picture of a particular region. In this case, the Flame and the Horsehead Nebula, of course. Uh, but my main issue is that whenever I zoom in on a particular detail of a nebula, at one point uh, I will notice these, uh, as you can see here on the edge of the horse head, I will notice these blocky pixels. Um, which actually means that I simply don't have uh, the resolution and the focal length necessary to produce a smooth picture at this level of magnification. That's what it is actually. And yeah, the same goes for the Flame Nebula, of course. So from a particular distance, the Flame Nebula looks pretty nice. But when I really zoom in on the on the picture here, at one point I will end up with these blocky pixels. Um, in uh, when, when we get uh, up close and personal with the Flame Nebula, and that this is actually one of the main reasons why I bought the Edge HD. So let me now show you the main results I have been getting over the past few days. Uh, so this is a single exposure of the Flame Nebula. It's a five minute exposure with my Hydrogen Alpha filter. Uh, I was already happy to be able to guide uh, the telescope for five minutes at this focal length. So I got pretty round stars in the picture, I was already happy with that. And the second thing, of course, I was happy with uh, was to see that I already got uh, the flame nebula some of the the details of the flame nebula in a single exposure um yeah let me show you also this is a, a stacked picture 30 pictures stacked uh of the flame nebula so a total integration time of about 150 minutes um and yeah you can clearly see here the flame nebula um at 1500 millimeters focal length and yeah what do you think um uh, I, I like it. I think this is my first attempt at taking, uh, yeah, taking a deep sky picture at 1500 millimeters of focal length. So I was already pretty happy with that. Um, and I also wanted to produce a colored picture. So I took, yeah, this is not perfect, but I took uh, like 20 minutes of RGB data and I, I combined it with the H alpha data you just saw. Um, so in order to produce a colored picture of the flame nebula. And yeah, actually then you can see here, the Elnitec produces this really nasty halo. So I have to come up with a strategy to deal with that. But yeah, in general, when you really zoom in on the Flame Nebula, you can see that at this level of magnification, it provides a smoother picture, I think. But I'm also happy to hear your thoughts, of course. And yeah, let's move on to the Horsehead Nebula. So this is a single exposure of the Horsehead Nebula. 5 minute exposure again with my H alpha filter um, and when stacked um, it looked like this so this is I think 25 pictures of the Horsehead Nebula uh, 5 minute pictures uh, with my uh, H alpha filter stacked and yeah again <clears throat> when you look at this picture you can see that yeah when we zoom in on the Horsehead Nebula you I, I just have the imaging scale necessary uh, to get to produce a smoother picture at this level of magnification basically uh, and I also try to make it into a colored picture so this is these are just first attempts here um, so yeah what do you think 